Hey everybody, today Rado runs down Seastead, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to the end of the world as we know it. And do we feel fine? We'll have to find out. So, this is basically Waterworld, the board game, and it's a sequel to a very popular game that came out last year, I believe, called Flotilla, which was set in this same post-apocalypse, floating junk pile on the ocean, everybody uh, scrabbling to get by kind of scenario. Although this is a two-player only game, and so I will be the orange player, Jen will be the blue player, and uh, we are ready to go. Although, actually, there is one more thing. In addition to there being three specialists that are out, we uh, take one of these starting cards that will tell us our starting resources and first player and all that. So three of them go away. And boom. Okay. I am this way. We'll say Jen is that way. So I am the first player. And I get an artifact and some kelp. Jen gets some metal and some fish. And fish are locked down, restricted. All right, so that's that. We are now set up. I am the first player, and we are off to the races. And how does the game work? Well, on your turn, you are either going to go diving or you are going to go building. And uh, then your turn is over. And there's some discounts to be had for various and sundry things. So uh, I can build if I have enough resources, the kelp, the artifacts, the metal, and the fish to be able to build one of my buildings on one of these floating islands. And I do that to you know activate all kinds of special powers and whatnot. And right now, with one artifact and one kelp, there are a couple places I could build. This flotilla, randomly, these were put out randomly, wants artifacts to be able to build here. This one wants kelp. And at the very, very least, um, it well, it costs varying amounts depending on which space you want to fill. Let's take a closer look at this flotilla. It costs two artifacts to build in this space. Two artifacts to build in this space. Three artifacts to build over here. Four over here. Five to build over here. And six to build over here. However, this space says that if I build a port specifically, it's a discount of one. So for one artifact, I could build a port right here if I wanted. Otherwise, uh, I can't build anything. And each of these islands has a discount. They build a port there for a discount. Build a port there. Build a port there. And build a port in there. So, um, you know, both of us could have our first turn just be using our starting resources to build ports. And that's a possibility, but I think I'd like to save up for something a little bit more meaningful. Ports are interesting because when you build them, you give yourself an in-game scoring opportunity. Because when I build this port here, I have to take one of these three port tiles, install it, and this tells me at the end of the game, well, hey, in this case, at the end of the game, I'll get points for leftover artifacts I've got. Plus, this also it makes it more attractive for anybody to build in this space, this space, this space, and this space. As you can see, it says build an academy over here for a point or build a shipyard over here for two points, etc., etc. So I could be doing that, but... I think I want to build more expensive stuff uh, because um, you know building in this space gets me no points, whereas building over here where I need four gives me two points and access to a special ability. So I think instead of building right from the get-go or using one of those discounted port spots, I'm going to go diving. And that means I reveal the top card of the dive deck and orient it so that both players get something. Let's see what the ocean will provide. Alrighty, we found a submerged port, and it's my choice. I can either give myself two more artifacts, or I can give myself a fish, a metal, and a kelp. So, um, whichever one of those I don't take will go to Jen. So this is a sort of I split you choose, except the split has already happened. I'm just going to choose. Do I want to give myself three different things or two of the same thing? Um, and basically, I put it down to indicate, uh, you know, again, this is me on uh, to the right is Jen. I think I will go on ahead and take two more artifacts. So now I've got three artifacts, which means I could build over here. Although if I get one more artifact, I could build here. Or if I get two more artifacts, I could build here and get more points and access special powers. Oh, but wait. 
Oh, but wait, folks. We weren't done with setup. Um, let's come back to that in a second. After this, uh, you know, and first player was figured out, there's one more thing that had to be decided. What the current law of the land is. What is the current decree? That might change my mind. Uh, because there's a whole bunch of these decree cards that fundamentally change the rules of the game. And our first decree was, there's a form trade pact. All right. When you pay to build... The build cost, you can spend two identical resources as a substitute for any one. All right, so basically a pair becomes a wild resource. That is the law of the land. And you know, with that in mind, all the more I want to get uh, groupings of stuff because I can use them as wild. So I will go on ahead and take the two. So now these two could be anything I want them to be uh, because of the form trade pack. Jen, meanwhile, gets one fish, although... Hold on a second. I'm giving Jen double fish and double... No, no, no. I'm going to give Jen this. We're going to go the other way. I don't want to give Jen two pairs versus my one. So I'll get some metal, and I'll get a pair for my kelp, and I'll get some fish. All right. So there we go. So um, that was it. If you're diving, that's all you're doing. Drawing a card and deciding who gets what, and your turn is over. Then it is now on to Jen's turn, and Jen, she's going to build. She could go diving as well. But uh, she is more interested in getting one of these ports going. And because uh, remember, uh, with just a single, you know, Jen could get this port. Uh, yeah, what the heck? Jen's just going to build uh, right here where it says it would cost two metal. But if you're building a port, you get a discount of one. So Jen will spend her only metal and build her first port, taken from left to right, right here. And um, boom. As a reward, Jen gets one resource of her choosing. And I think Jen will go on and take an artifact. So now she's got three of a kind to, to build deeper or use these as pairs and stuff like that. But Jen now has to pick one of these three ports, thereby changing the fundamental nature of this flotilla, this little island here. Um, What the heck? Jen will go on ahead and put this here. And then a new one is revealed for later. Okay, and so things have changed on this flotilla. As if we were to look a little bit closer, we can see that, well, first of all, Jen can get up to three points for having leftover artifacts at the end of the game because this is her port. But uh, again, if, if you look at this little uh, hex here, as a you know a representative of the main hex, the bottom right and the bottom left, and the uh, or you know the, the bottom right, the bottom left, the top right, the top left, or however you want to look at them, these two mean these these two indicate over here. So what this is saying is, if anybody builds a shipyard in this zone, they'll get two bonus points. If anybody builds an academy over here, they'll get one. If you build an academy over here, you'll get one. If you build a shipyard over here, you'll get two. And uh, so that has just changed things up. Now, it'd be interesting if one of these spaces wanted you to build shipyards, and sometimes other spaces want you to build particular types of things. But anyway, Jen has got, she got a free resource for building this. Uh, she basically got a new endgame goal, and she's made scoring opportunities for everybody else. If they've got metal, because that's what you need to build on this island. And as it happens, I've got one medal, although, really, I have two, because, thanks to the form trade pact, I can convert two kelp into uh, something else that I want. Okay, so, that was Jen's turn. Uh, she built. I dived, she built. And now it's my turn again. And once again, I can dive or I can build. If I dive, I'll draw and I'll be, uh, you know, trying to pick whatever's best for me and not best for Jen, or I can start building. And I wonder... Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would like to rush over here and build and take advantage of these bonus points, but Jen chose a uh, scoring bonuses that don't really work very well. If Jen had chosen, um, say, this one, although I don't think this one was out yet, it's saying, hey, build an academy here and you get two points, and that would be perfect for this spot because, oops, 
Uh, this is a space that when you build here, whatever you build here, you immediately get the bonus of tapping one of your specialists to get two resources. We don't have any specialists at the beginning of the game. The specialists are these cards over here. You have to build an academy. And when you build an academy, you get a specialist. So if I built an academy here, I would get a specialist who I could then immediately tap to get two resources, thereby making building here basically free. But the problem is, I don't get points for building an academy here. I get points for building a shipyard here. And if I build a shipyard here, I won't get to take advantage of the, hey, get some free resources based on one of your specialists, because I won't have made an academy first. So, interesting. I think I'm going to go diving again. Let's see what we got. Uh, we have now some freshwater caves. Two kelp or metal artifact and fish. I got to pick where we're going to go. I am going to go this way. Give myself the three. The fish, the uh, metal, and the artifact. So now I got a whole bunch of stuff. I've got all kinds of two pairs to be able to build wherever I want, thanks to the form trade pack. And meanwhile, Jen gets a couple of kelp. And she's not complaining. That was my turn. It is Jen's turn now. And Jen could go diving. But I think... I think... I think she is just going to keep building. Jen loves building those ports. And it uh, only it would cost one because, again, there's a discount. Uh, one artifact to build a port over here. And Jen gets one resource of her choosing. What the heck? She'll go on ahead and take some kelp. So she's got three kelp if she wants to build over here now. And uh, once again, she's got to pick a port. And... Um, it's going to help her get, uh, you know, I mean, she'll get points for kelp at the end of the game or points for metal left over at the end of the game. Let's go on ahead and get some... Uh, let's go on ahead and do this one. All right. So, once again, Jen has changed the landscape of this uh, flotilla. Now, you don't get anything for building here or any kind of bonus, but building an academy up here gives you three points. Oh. Oh. All right, all right. So three points, two points for a shipyard, one point for a shipyard there. And okay, so that's that. A new one comes out. Jen is just building really quick and, um, you know, basically building for free because she's only spending one resource and then getting another resource back. But the interesting thing is she's creating opportunities for me. And because I've been saving up, I think I'm going to build now as well. I do kind of like this one. I would like to get an academy. So I want to build here where I need three artifacts, which normally I would need three. But thanks to this, I will go on ahead and turn two... Um, I'll turn two fish into another um, artifact. So I've got the three artifacts I need to build in this particular spot. And I will build an academy. The first academy of the game. Now, when you're building, first you get the reward of the building in question. Jen's reward for the buildings when she built ports was actually putting these little add-ons. Uh, the reward for an academy is get the diplomat, the founder, or the captain. I can claim one of these three specialists. Now, specialist is worth a point at the end of the game if you never actually use their special ability. Or anytime you want, or not anytime you want, within the restrictions of when they can act, you can use their ability and then you flip them face down. So you can't use their ability anymore. Although there are ways to flip them back face up. So you will be able to do more stuff with them. And I've got to decide which of these three I want. Although, in all honesty, it doesn't really matter right now because I'm going to use their ability, their uh, the specialist for something completely different. But I do like that founder ability of getting to take a bonus turn. That's pretty cool. So, we will say nay to the diplomat and the uh, captain. I have the founder on my side. And, of course, you might imagine a new one comes out, a wrecker. All righty. So, um, on a future turn, when I dive, this says it's a dive action, this is a build action, this is a dive action, this is a... The Diplomat can be used either on your turn, whether you're diving or building. So normally I would save this uh, on a turn where I dive to be able to get a bonus action. But instead, remember, um, I get... Uh, oh wait, oh shoot! No, no, no! Ah, I was thinking I was building here, because this is a place where if I build a academy here, I could then use my specialist immediately to get two resources. 
Ugh, but I didn't do that. I built over here because that's where the three points were. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to this Founder on a turn where I dive. I'll use her, uh, thereby giving up a victory point to be able to take a bonus turn for all intents and purposes. That'll come in handy. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to having the Founder do some work. Okay, so that was that. I first did the action that the building gave me, which was get a Founder. Then I do the action of the place where I've built. And in this case, it's get one resource for every port that's on this flotilla. And there's one port. It's Jen's port, but it doesn't matter. I will benefit from that. So I can take any one resource I want, and I think I'll take another metal. Because I'm thinking about going and building over here on this island next. And so I'm saving up to build in a big, heavy space instead of the little light stuff like Jen's doing. So that was my turn. And it is Jen's turn. And Jen says, you know what? I'm just going to keep on building ports super cheap. Jen is going to spend her one fish to uh, build her third port on the discount spot over here, which gives her one resource back. She'll go on ahead and take kelp, so she's saving up for a big build on the kelp building. And uh, the reward over here was, what port does she want to put in that spot? Let's see, she's already getting leftover uh, points for artifacts and kelp. Let's just keep on uh, mixing it up. Let's go on ahead and have one for metal as well. So now, I mean, normally leftover resources aren't worth anything, but Jen's getting leftover points for you know having excess goods of all types at the end of the game. And so that was that. She's just built again. And by the way, folks, you will notice, if Jen builds one more, she will get a bonus action. You get a bonus uh, you know, whenever you complete a row or a column in, on your little building spots. All right, so that was Jen. She built again. It is my turn. And because I've got the founder, I could go diving and then build right away. I know what I was thinking about what I wanted to do was I want to build over here. And I haven't decided what, because there's no particular bonus for building any type of building. So I could build a port here and give myself some in-game scoring opportunities. Or I could build another academy to get another specialist. Or I could build a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, but, 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 uh, a shipyard, which lets me deploy one of my ships to any flotilla I want. And that means that area will be a discount place to build in the future. So, and I could build in this spot because I need four. I've got one, two, three, and then I've got this pair as a four. But let's go a little bit heavier. Let's uh, dive first, because I enjoy diving. So I can give myself two metal, which means I won't have to do any wilds, or I can give myself a bunch of other stuff. Let's go on ahead and once again go this way. I will give Jen two metal, and I'll give myself an artifact, a kelp, and a fishy fish. So that was another dive. All right. And my turn will normally be over, except I will use the Founder. I will exhaust this card, flipping it. Although, but if I build all of my academies, the reward for building the fourth academy is I get to unexhaust one of my uh, specialists and I can use their power again. So I'm now going to take a whole nother turn and I'm going to build here. I'm going to spend one, two, three, and I'll use two of this kelp as a pair to build here. And I will build. I want more specialists. I'm going to build a second academy there. Now, it doesn't matter what I build because, you know, this is the one place on this flotilla that's not affected by Jen's port. As you can see, there's no bonus point for building here. There's no bonus points for building here. It's just for building in these four spots. This is where I built, though, because I just scored two points for this. I'm going to give myself another specialist, which if I never use them, they're worth a point. Um, and I'm also going to get to do the action of this space. Which is very cool. But let's get, uh, see. So there's still the deployment of the captain. Let's take a look at the wrecker here. So yeah, that's pretty fun. Basically, I get to upgrade an academy or a shipyard only having to pay the difference. So I could say later on, instead of building a new thing, I could move this uh, academy from here where I'm only getting uh, two points over here where I'm getting two points plus another point. Plus I would get this bonus as well. That seems very nice. Let's have the wrecker join our crew. It's a wrecking crew of sorts. All right, so I've got a second person who is not exhausted. A new one came out. But now, that was the bonus I got for building my academy. Now, more importantly, the bonus for um, building in this zone. I get two of these radiation tokens, which may sound bad, but it's good. Uh, it was a nuclear blast in the 50s that caused to the rise of sea level that made the world sink, and that's why we live on this uh, you know junk yard now. Um, and there's a lot of uh, radioactivity in the environment. 
whenever you take one of these radioactives, it actually represents you cleaning up the radioactivity. So I just scored two more points for building this. That's one, two, three, four. Plus, when I move it over here, it's a, a, a move it over here. It's another five, six points. So that's pretty nice. And as exciting as all that is, what I care about even more is this other little icon that says change the decree. Because you'll notice, I don't have any pairs anymore. Jen hasn't made use of the decree at all yet. And this is why I wanted to rush over here. I, I, I used it quite a bit to good effect. I've got some nice moves made. And now, a new decree is going to come out. The pact is gone. I draw two and I pick a new law of the land. It'll be a time for open bartering or upgraded engines. Those are both very, very cool. Wow. Okay, so upgraded engines is going to be great if I want to start building shipyards because it gives me a lot more control over how I can deploy my ships. I'm not restricted like normal. But bartering means I could ignore the special power of the place I built and just get a resource of my choosing. So if I'm like building in a place where, you know, I don't want to flip, I don't, I don't want to exhaust my specialist to get two resources, I could ignore that power and just get a free power. And this is, this is it lasts until somebody does a new decree. And I did want to build here. Oh. And, but I don't want to lose my specialist. I think, yeah, it's now time of open bartering on the open sea. So the rules have changed. I've made a whole bunch of points. And, um, all, and now, Jen, if she was planning on you know, converting uh, you know, two of a kind into something else, she cannot do it now. All right. So that was my turn, big turn, and it is now Jen's turn. And let's see here. Huh, huh, huh. Yeah, I think Jen's gonna put her um, her mad port run on hold. She's got one more cheapy port she could do over there, but Jen wants to take advantage of the decree I just made. So Jen's gonna take her two artifacts and build over here where she needs two artifacts. And this is a space where normally you'd have to exhaust a specialist to get some resources. But Jen says she doesn't want to do that. She'll do some open bartering and just get a resource for free. So what does she want to build here? She could go on ahead and build another port if she wants. Uh, she, she built them in these places where there's discounts, but you can build them wherever. And uh, you know, if Jen has two ports here, which would be another opportunity to score, later on, if Jen builds over here, she gets a point for every port on this place. But I might build there and get a point for it. Although Jen can see I'm not close to building anything now because I'm exhausted. So Jen could go for another port. Oh my gosh, yes. Actually, she could. Because she would trigger her port bonus for having built them all. And um, what that is, is that she can pick any one of her ports. The one she just built or any of the others. Look at what the end game scoring is and score that now based on how much she has. Wow. So, uh, Jen, she's got... I mean, so if she triggers this, she can get three points for basically building this port. And uh, that would be pretty nice. But you know what? She could do that anytime she wants. And she'd still rather build a port for free over there. So I think Jen is going to build her first shipyard over here. So she's built a shipyard, which is worth one point, And the shipyard lets her deploy one of her ships where to any of the islands. But there are restrictions. The restriction is, you cannot put a ship in a place where something has already been built. You can't put a ship where there's already a ship. And you have to put a ship at the cheapest place of a given... Uh, so if Jen wants to, say, put this ship right here, uh, this is the... Or, uh, actually, uh, over here, this is the cheapest place to build, she has reduced the cost of whatever would be built here by one. And currently, if you build a port here, um, there's already a discount of one, and this would be a discount too. So you could build a port here totally for free, and you get a resource. Here's the thing though, if Jen puts that there, she knows, I'll probably build that port. So Jen doesn't want to do that. Jen will go on ahead and put her ship right here. And now, whatever gets built in this zone, Costs one less. No, you, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, because she, she can't put it here. Occupied, occupied, occupied. This is the cheapest. So it only costs three artifacts to build here. Although, yeah, no, 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 no. I think Jen will go on ahead and put this over here because now it's one, it costs one less metal to build right here where she has parked her ship. And I don't have any metal, so I can't take advantage of that, but Jen can take advantage of that. Now remember, 
This, if I had made upgraded engines, Jen could have put her ship wherever she wanted, instead of always in the cheapest available spot. But as it is, uh, I didn't choose that. I chose open bartering, which Jen took advantage of. And so now Jen's going to be able to build here, taking advantage of opening bartering again, and she'll only have to pay one metal to do it. And she knows, I don't have any metal, so I can't take advantage of that at all. All right. And the other interesting thing, although there is an interesting thing, if I did build here instead of Jen, regardless of who builds here, Jen will get to move her ship then, following the same rules, to another place to create another discount. But if I take advantage of her ship to get the discount to build there, then Jen will passively get any one resource she wants uh, you know, as a payment for helping out her opponents. So, although Jen's planning on using this herself. And the ship, once it's out, it'll stay out. So this is her next thing. She's going to build over here, get another free resource. It's going to cost her one less because she knows I can't build there. So she used that shipyard, took advantage of my bartering to do that. She got herself a point. Although the interesting thing is, she didn't get anything else. Uh, the, because she put this here, there's no implicit bonus for building in that spot. If she built the shipyard over here, she would have gotten two more bonus points. But she's still happy about that, taking advantage of the bartering. Okay, and back to me. So, here's the deal. Um, I've got one kelp. I could, you know what, I think I better go on ahead and build a port as well. I'm going to build a port here, which cost me one, one kelp, but I'm going to be able to get anything I want back. And um, I get to put a victory point thing. Do I want to have points for having leftover artifacts, kelp, or metal? It's kind of hard to say right now, but let's see here. I have already built, and yeah, maybe um, I've already, I'll, I'll do it for artifacts because maybe I'm not going to build in artifacts anymore. Maybe it'll be cheaper for me just to move my, uh, my, um, uh, my academy. So now I want to have artifacts left over at the end of the game, and now these have become more attractive to build in. And I get a resource, and what the heck, let's make it an artifact because I want to make sure I've got three artifacts left over at the end of the game to manage that. So that was my turn there. And, hey, I could... Oh, no, instead of taking the build action, I could use the Wrecker to just pay the difference to bump this up to a higher level, or this one up to a higher level. All right, but anyway, so that was my turn. It is Jen's turn, and she missed her last chance to get a port. But don't worry, you can still build a port wherever. Those are just the nice discounted places to build ports. So what is she up to next? Um... You know what? I think Jen will take advantage of her benefit over here. It would have cost two, but because of her ship, it only costs one to build right there. And then the ship is going to move on. And she will get her last port built. Boom. And uh, so first, she gets to put another scoring there. And she'll put a fish. So now, Jen gets points at the end of the game for all four types of resources because of all of her ports. And so she got that. And oh, oh, oh. And she gets to do this, which is, hey, she's got four, um, which is more than enough. She'll get three off of that. Jen just got three points, which are represented by these little, you know, clean up the radiation. So that's three points for her. And now, finally, she will... She won't exhaust the specialists, thanks to my open bartering. And I was planning on building here myself. Thanks to my open bartering, Jen will just take a resource of her choosing. It'll be another kelp. So now, she can build in the big uh, side of the kelp island if she wants. Because she saved up a lot. And she could actually change the decrees if she comes over here, as an example. Plus... Well, we're both kind of in a race to build here because there's two points to be had uh, because it's get points for every, uh, what do you call it, port that's on this island. Although it costs five to build there. Although I do want to build an academy there. Although instead of building an academy, I could just pay the difference using my wrecker and move my academy there, get the bonus point, get the two points from gens, etc., etc. And that would only cost me one medal, but I have no medal! I have no medal. So let's go diving. Let's go find some medal. Okay, this one. I can take any resource I want and give Jen two fish. Or I can get two fish and give Jen... That's not what I was looking for, but I'll take the two fishy fish. Because nobody... There's not much building going on over there yet. And Jen will take anything she wants. She'll take some more kelp. She is the kelpy queen. And that was it. I dived. And um, Jen says, yeah. I've had enough of the open bartering. Jen is going to build... She's going to build her... Let's see, what does she want? She wants to build a shipyard over here to get two bonus points. She's going to build her second shipyard, which means she's going to deploy her second ship. Oh, wait! She had to... Oh! 
She had to deploy um, her first ship after she was done. She made it over here. And now this new ship can't go to her existing ship. It's got to go to the cheapest place somewhere else. She'll put it over um, here. So she's just made all the metal spaces cheaper. But in the meantime, although... No, yeah, yeah. She, all right, so she's getting two points for building this because she built a ship. She spent all of this, and she gets two points. And she says, we are done with open bartering. I never even got to use it. And Jen says, the new law of the land will either be scuttling of fleets, and it just so happens Jen has a fleet of ships. So that could be handy for her. Or she could declare statehood. What is she going to do? Honestly, I'm not quite sure, but I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a pretty good idea of the gameplay of Seastead. And I got to say, folks, this is great. We like this one a lot. It's very fast, uh, quick playing with a lot of variety. Every time you play, you're going to see you know different combinations of specialists come out and different combinations of decrees, and these I love. This is probably my favorite thing about the game, that every time you play, if you you're playing the advanced variant, which I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, there's always a uh, a rule in a, in a, you know to begin with, and they will change over time, and that's just a lot of fun thinking about. Right, of these two new laws, which is the one I w that will benefit me the most and my opponent the least? Yeah, these are fantastic. I love this idea and would love to see it in more games. Like I don't know, maybe the game I'm working on, uh, but that's neither here nor there. And uh, so. I really enjoy everything about this game. I like the Waterworld setting. Uh, my wife likes it because she actually loves the movie Waterworld. Go figure. I, I think it's I think it's uh it's undervalued. I think it's a nice enough movie. But this game really feels to me like Brink, the board game. And Brink was the last video game I was the lead designer on. And so I have a really strong sense of nostalgia. Especially, I mean, I gotta wonder: Did the developers actually call them the founders because they were they really aware of Brink? Probably not. But uh, um, you know, there's a really nice big nostalgia hit for both of us for different reasons. So we like the setting, we like the world, and we really like the gameplay. Especially another thing I gotta give a shout out to is the eye split you choose in this game, which is so superior to other games that do it. Actually, Jen and I often have a hard time with eye split you choose because it can be so analysis paralysis, the splitting part. Right? Okay. Well, I can make this a set of three and one or two and two. What do I want? What I want to make sure I, you know, I'm, I'm doing this so that. Uh, I can get what I want and make sure you aren't going to have any good choices, but I'll still have a good choice left over. It's brilliant in theory, but in practice, we always find it really bogs the game down. In this game, no, whoever dives, the splitting's already happened. The diver just has to ch make the choosing. And that is really smart. Very, very cool. Uh, in much the same way as Decrees, it's a tough choice, but it's an engaging one. And the fact that this world evolves based on what players do. I put out a ship that makes it cheaper for you to build Build, you take advantage of that, but then I get passive benefits and get to move the ship where I really want to go so that I can take advantage of it on my turn. There's really cool combos. And um, at the end of the game, which it comes very, very quickly, either based on when all the radioactivity has been cleaned up or all the diving has been done or any one island has been completely filled up. Is there a fourth way? I think those are the main ways. Yeah, a flotilla's fill, or, or or some person has built all but one of their buildings, and then you just tally up for the end scoring. It's I, I, it's hard to say who's going to win because of who took advantage of all the you know the opportunities from the ports, uh, the leftover resources for the ports you built, the uh, points for the stuff on the board, the uh, uh, the specialists you didn't use, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's great. It's really sharp. And I have one complaint. Only one. Let's see. Yeah, here's one here. This action right here. This action, if somebody builds on this space, all players have to discard their resources down to four. And that can be a pretty mean attack if you are low on stuff and I've got a bunch of stuff and I'm saving up to build something and you build there, boom, even if you don't care about the building, you're just doing it to make me have to lose all my stuff. We hate that. And it's on a couple of the islands. Now, the nice thing is these islands are two-sided with different powers. But if you want to play with decrees, at least two of the four islands have to be on the B side so you have access to decrees. So one of the cool things about the game is that there's so much flexibility because you can mix and match these islands, A's and B's. But um, if you want to have decrees, which I would not want to play this game without, uh, I, I, I just wish that one action, because there's a lot of other cool actions, um, but you know, 
I, you know, it, that you know that one aggressive thing. At other, in an otherwise nearly flawless game, I guess I can't complain too much because it just means we're more restricted in the layouts we can do because we would always want to avoid that particular "ha ha, I made you lose all your stuff." Isn't that mu isn't that fun? But otherwise, everything about Seastead is phenomenal, folks. And that was the rundown. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Uh,